now I raised $10 million for real estate deals. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode at Nova Rice and Best. So back by popular demand, we have our very special guest, Bronson Hill. Bronson, welcome to the channel. Hey, great to be with you guys again. These are some of my dearest friends. So, so excited to be with you guys again. Likewise, we're so excited to have you here. So we talked about raising $10 million to invest in real estate, but that was back then when we met Bronson for the very first time. Up to this point, you definitely raised a lot more money than that. So why don't you tell us about it? Like, what do you need that much money for? What do you do with it? Yeah, so actually it's 25 million now. So I've, I've, I've picked up since then. But uh, basically what we do is we buy apartment buildings and we have investors that are trying to save on taxes or they're trying to uh, have their money work for them rather than them having to buy houses or to do the work themselves. Um, this is a way they can passively invest to be able to get a great return on their investment. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's really passionate about it. We love doing it. We love helping investors and it's just a lot of fun. And well, I mean, you've grown so much since the last time we spoke, so you definitely are doing something right. So tell me, where do you go and, and find these investors that want to work with you? What, what, what do you offer them in, in addition to um, investing in real estate without getting hands on? Yeah. So the biggest thing I've done is just like what you guys do is create educational content around, you know, why someone should do this and what are, what are you discovering or showing somebody a problem that they don't, don't, don't know that they have. So typically a lot of high earners in the U.S. will pay sometimes 30, 40, 50 percent or more of their income in taxes, which is awful. So if you're a physician, if you're a lawyer, if you own a business, you can pay a lot in taxes. And so we offer a way to basically help defer or potentially uh, reduce taxes or even eliminate taxes in some cases. I'm not a, a CPA or tax professional, but uh, just these investments offer some real tax advantages. And so uh, people, when they, when they come and they join, a lot of times they've had some real estate experience. They're like, I don't want to own houses. It's too much work. I've got, I don't want to get calls at 2 a.m. about the toilets backed right. up or something. Some horror stories like you've heard or they trash the place. This is a way that you actually can be fully passive where you vet a team like our team that uh, and there's many many groups that do real estate syndication, or that's the term real estate syndication. And then they vet the deal, and then they'll basically receive mailbox money, or they'll receive passive income, which uh, which is amazing. So, yeah, yeah, sounds great. Um, we wouldn't want to get a check in the mail without having to stress out at two o'clock in the morning. So now, Bronson, um, for those who are actually interested in, in, in investing with you, let's say I come in and I say, Bronson, here's my money what's next? Like, how, how do I know what's coming? Yeah. So basically how we do it, I mean, groups do it differently. So I'm just kind of talking generally from, you know, I can share how we do it. And there's other groups that do this as well, but I do think the skill of learning how to passively invest is a great skill because if you're a business owner or somebody who wants to retire and you feel like you can actually effectively uh, double your investment every four to six years, which I'm not talking about any specific investment, but we see a lot of investments conservatively that can, can do that. Um, it's a way you can grow your wealth without taking up more of your time. You know, if you're mm -hmm. having to, uh, you know, do another, you know, small apartment building or a single family or do all the stuff yourself, it just feels like a lot of work. So when people uh, invest, basically, usually we start a relationship first. We get to know them. They get to know us. We make sure it's a good fit. We make sure our goals and are kind of on the same page and kind of we want to make sure it's a good fit both ways. So we have a call to kind of, you know, introduce people to our group and us be introduced to them. And then when we have a new deal, sometimes it fills up in a couple of days. Sometimes it takes a few weeks. It just depends on the deal. And then, um, you know, investment size is usually 75000 to 200000 or more. So we have some people bring in a lot. You know, we have people look like sell a house and they bring in $800,000. We've got one of those now. And then we've had some that just do the minimum of seventy five. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's really a fun process because it's very educational and it's very relational. So we like having a relationship with our investors also. So Bronson, you know that when it comes to investing, trust is very important. So what are you doing on the back end to guarantee that you're following the proper steps, that you're making sure that the investor's money is protected? Because it is a lot of money at the end of the day. Yeah, it is a lot of money and it's people's uh, you know life savings or their retirement or it's, it's very, very important. So there's a couple of things. One is on the legal side, we have a good attorney that we work with to make sure that we're abiding by the right way. You can't just call your friends and say, hey, we're going to raise a million dollars for a deal. Um, you can do it, but if something goes wrong, it's almost you're personally guaranteeing that investment. Right. And so basically we what we do is we have this paperwork, the attorney writes up. It's expensive to have it done, but you do it the right way. 
you get it structured correctly, and then basically it allows you to have some protection just in case there is a loss, right? You don't, you hope there's never any loss. We've never had an investor loss, but if it happens, um, you're protected. And then, you know, one thing I just suggest to people that are investing in deals is just, you know, be willing to ask for references from the group. So we have some people ask for references. So I'll give out a couple of references. Um, I'll try to, you know, find out the reputation with their online presence. Sometimes we'll do a background check on other partners. I do that on other partners that are part of our deals, just so that we're kind of covering all, the, all bases. You can't guarantee that, you know, you're totally risk-free of a scam or something, but it's something that I also think about because I invest passively in other deals as well. So thank you, Bronson. That was definitely very helpful for those um, who are looking to invest their money uh, in a way that it's beneficial and comfortable for them. But what about those who are on the other side of the coin that are looking to learn about syndications and, and raise money the proper way? Can you share any tools or um, any learning experiences that can help them uh, get to the level that hopefully they will eventually partner with you in the future? <laughs> yeah, well, the best thing I can say is is when you're learning about real estate syndication or when you get beyond single family, it's very much of a team sport. So uh, we're actually at a conference, all of us right now, right. we're learning about things having to do with real estate and partnerships and teamwork and sales and raising money. And, and it's just amazing how when you go to live events, particularly regional or national conferences, um, you learn a lot. You learn from the education that they teach you mm -hmm. and you also learn from the uh, networking. So you'll meet people and oh, let's do a deal together or somebody can raise money or they can do a deal. So you can do different parts of, of the equation. And I think even as a passive investor, that's really helpful as well. Some great books out there. If you search real estate syndication, there's some great books. Uh, there's a website called goodhire.com. So any of my partners I work with on a deal, I always background check them just to make sure. And I, I'm, I share my background check as well, just to make sure that if something goes bad, at least I've, I've checked, you know, to make sure they're okay. Thank you, Bronson. That was actually very helpful. Um, so you, you raise a lot of money um, and with a lot of money comes great responsibilities. So who do you include as part of your power team to help you manage that large sum of money successfully? Yeah. So team is really important. I think, um, like I mentioned, it is really a team sport. So, uh, you know, the easiest way I think to start is in raising money. So if somebody's watching like, Hey, I, I can maybe talk to some friends and family and start to gather some money. It is really, really helpful to have someone on the team though, that has been doing this for over five to 10 years. Hmm. So then, you know, they know they can find deals effectively. And the biggest thing is they can actually manage a deal effectively. So it's one thing you can raise all this money and get all this done, but if you can't execute on your plan, uh, and not everybody has that experience. It's very different managing That's a, right. you know, a single family or having a property manager than you're like trying to manage a 200 unit apartment complex and you have all this money, other people's money in the deal, right? So uh, one of my partners has 28 years of experience and over 13,000 units. So you can kind of borrow other people's experience in different areas. So I would say it takes usually at least two people. Sometimes there's a third or fourth. It just depends kind of how much money you need to raise based on how much you feel like you're able to raise. Maybe one person found the deal, somebody else is going to manage it. So when you put together your team, it is important to try to find somebody I think that's really experienced and has been doing it a long time. And have you noticed that now going from 10 million to 25, has your team grown? So is it the same size? Um, what's your take on that? Yeah, so it's changed a little bit. So the nice thing about real estate deals is that um, a partnership is more like for the deal. So you kind of like, I have this thing, like you don't really know somebody until you do a deal together, right? right. So if you and Anthony, do we did a deal together, like you kind of really get to know people, like how do they do under pressure? What happens if things are stressful? It's like you know, a marriage. It kind of is, <laughs> but it but it's a little shorter term, but it gives you some you know insight in just how it would be like to work with this person long-term. So the partnerships that I have, uh, one partner I'm working with now this is, we're on our, our fifth deal together Great. and I've had other partners and we've just done, you know, a deal here, a few deals here, but I've, I've, I've my partners I really like. And so sometimes there's some of that where the more you work together, the more you kind of gravitate around people that have similar values that you say, you know, you get some experience as well. So you know what you're not looking for, right? So experience, for it sure. gives you just in the beginning, you just want to get a deal done. That's the hardest thing when you're starting is just getting your first deal done. I remember when I raised a hundred thousand dollars for my first deal, which came from an investor at a meetup I started in Los Angeles where I live. I lived and I didn't even have a deal, but he said I'd invest in one of your deals. So I connected him with another guy who was in that group who had a deal was raising money. So you're basically, the goal is to be a connector and help to connect uh, a good deal with the right, with money. So great, Bronson. Thank you for sharing. So, so far we've gotten all the good news and um, so far seems great, but uh, what about some of the pitfalls either investors or syndicators should have been uh, looking for? 
Yeah, so I think the biggest thing uh, as a passive investor, you know, if you're investing in someone's deal, reputation is really important. So the other day I had one of my investors who they uh, sent me something they got a click funnel thing online. They're like, hey, I'm thinking about investing with this guy. And I was like, I've never heard of this guy. I don't know who this person is. I can't find anything online about him. And I'm like, to me, like if there was a scam, it would be that, right? Just some sort of clickbait thing that nobody knows this person. You know, they're, you try to check them out. You can't really find much about them. So that's something just to know who you're investing with. Referrals are huge. So if you can find a referral from another passive investor. So if you're, you know, you go to events and you meet other passive investors at a meetup or at a national conference, you can search on meetup.com for local meetups. This is a great place to find people. But uh, get a referral. That's really helpful. I think on the other side of uh, being an actual syndicator is go get some training. There's some great events on syndication. Um, and I think just really, you know, continuing to uh, try to ask the question, how can I add value to other people? So find somebody experienced, find out what they need. Do they need somebody to find deals for them? Do they need somebody that can bring money? Um, do they just need help with other things? Like just try to be a resource as much as you can. And then opportunities open up for people that can help. So it seems that um, the best way to find legit deals, um, both ways, whether find legit deals or looking for investors who will be willing to give you the money to invest in real estate for them, will be to find uh, local real estate uh, events um, because now you have something in common to talk about and it seems like it's the best place to meet everyone's needs. But for the one who is looking to give the money to somebody and for the one who is actually looking to raise the money, correct? Yeah, I think so. I think basically when you're in a place where people are uh, to want to talk about real estate anyway, you're going to find some people that are very experienced. And a really good question to ask is, uh, you know, maybe what's your, what's gone well for you, but also tell me something that hasn't gone well. Tell me, tell me like a horror story. Tell, what, what advice would you give to me? I'm brand new. What would you tell me? And people love to share their advice, right? If yes. you just come with a humble attitude and you're like, Hey, I'm new, teach me. So it's kind of an ego, you know, it kind of boasts somebody's <laughs> ego. Hey, well, tell them I'm the, I'll be the Padawan, you know, you teach me. And so, um, so that's something I recommend that anybody's new is just, just be willing to ask lots of questions and learn. There you go. So that was Bronson Hill, everybody. For those who are actually looking to invest with Bronson, check out his YouTube channel right here. You see his link at the screen. And if you're looking to learn more about syndication, also go to Bronson Hill's channel. He has lots and lots of information about syndication that you can definitely learn a lot from. Bronson, thanks so much for your time. It's definitely been an honor once again to have you in our channel today. Well, thanks so much. It's always great to be here. Love working with you guys. I love what you're doing, adding value to people and teaching them about investing and finance. So well done. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody.